playing a Clásico in Camp Nou means everything. Most of these players are Barcelona fans. Fue increíble, la verdad. It's Ronaldo! He was born to be the phenomenon. In the space of six years, he'd gone from being a raw novice to going in with one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. This is all about the fan zone, and we want everyone at home, don't we, to get involved, scanning that QR code for our UK and US viewers. Get involved. We want to know what you guys are thinking. It is day two of fight week and it takes place right here at the magnificent Barclays Centre, home of the Brooklyn Nets. Today, though, it's the home of boxing as we are going to see our main fighters here, Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, come face to face in what is going to be an explosive night of boxing right here, same arena on Saturday. We had a great fight today. We had a great fight today. Great fight to the Amazon, no doubt. We need to fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's fight. Live on the Zone Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to a night. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Brian Garcia, lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one else. Live on the Zone Worldwide, April 20th. You want some real fight? You can find me. I love that shot. Fantastic shot. Welcome inside the Barclays Center. As I said, home of the Brooklyn Nets. As you can see, it's been taken over today. The press conference, uh, day two of fight week. Yesterday, we had the media workouts. Today is the press conference. Tomorrow, it is the weigh-ins and Saturday night. Everyone will throw hands. Sergio Mora. And look who's joined us. Look who's joined us. Mr. Ariel Hawani as well. Yeah, subjective. Self-proclaimed. Yeah, subjective as well. He started already. Oscar's already started talking. We're going to go over to that Oscar in a minute. But Ariel, excited for this one. Big fight oh week. Big God. fight week, Phil. Absolutely, and it's great to have a big fight here in New York. It's been a while, right? Not a lot of winning at the Barclays Center this season. This is a winning fight. I love everything about this fight. I love the beef. I love the history. Game seven, right, between them. They fought six times in the past. What kind of Ryan is going to show up? Does Haney continue his dominance? Everything about this, top notch. Yeah, the press conference will be split into two parts. So we're going to do the undercard uh, guys first, and then obviously we're going to have Devin and Ryan separately. Um, Sergio, it's good to be in the Barclays as well. I mean... Yeah, there used to be a lot of big fights here. It doesn't happen as much anymore. Obviously, they go to the T-Mobile, they go to MSG, they go to Saudi Arabia. It's good to be here, though, for a big fight. Maybe for you, because last time I was here, I got knocked out by Daniel Jacobs. So thanks <laughs> for bringing that up. Yes, ah, I love the bar. Sorry, I'm sorry. Golly. <laughs> but it is good to be here, though, isn't it? Absolutely. No, it's a, it's a beautiful venue. It's right in the middle of Brooklyn. Uh, I'm surprised there's no fans in here for the press conference. Me and Ariel were talking yes. about that because the fans is what makes these events great. But other than that, 
Yeah, it's a magnificent place. I agree. Can we let the fans in, please? Can they come please. in? I think they're in for the way in which is going to be interesting. As well. I want to see what side they're going to take. That'll be interesting. Like, who's got a lot of the fans? I, I'm guessing Devon, potentially. I it. disagree. You think Ryan's going to have more well, fans? Well, first of all, they're two West Coast fighters, mm -hmm. but Ryan has that connection with the younger fans, right? And I think for the weigh-ins tomorrow, you'll see more younger fans because it's during the day, and so they seem to like him. They follow him on social media. He's the bigger star, so to speak. Haney, the better boxer. But I think for the casual who might show up to the weigh-in, he'll get the latter pop. But I'm really curious about that in general, especially on Saturday, because of the fact that they're two West Coast guys fighting here in New York. i got to be honest, I was surprised when Brooklyn was announced as the venue and the mm -hmm. site of this fight. I thought it was going to be maybe Cali, maybe Vegas, somewhere like that. So I'm really curious to see who's who's the heel and who's the face come Saturday. Oh, yeah, I, I like it. I mean, we've started to see a little bit of that on 40 Days, which is fantastic. Here's a little clip of 40 Days where we do obviously discuss Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. This, all of this, is a story that winds and twists heightens and builds and pits the savant against the showman right back where they started opposite each other inside the square circle as their rivalry loop closes on april 20th me and devin we had a long history in the amateurs we've been fighting since we were seven eight years old this time it's for the wbc championship title belt everything's on the line for this one for sure consider this bout different in every conceivable way, different from the familiarity in play. The six previous meetings, all in the amateurs, this duel currently split at three wins apiece. Ryan, he was my biggest rival in the amateurs. It was only a matter of time. Different also in styles, featuring Devin the Dream Haney, the most technically proficient boxer on earth, and Ryan Garcia, king of quickness. That savage left hook forever aimed at suspect chins. He can take an ass with him, but can he take an ass with eight ounce gloves? We'll see if he can weather the storm. It's boxing's game seven. Stakes higher, more visceral, dizzying. That's what all this is about. Number seven, the, the one that matters, the one that's for, for all the marbles. That's the story of two paths that shaped the other, two rivals and what they charted since diverting. We were on a collision course since birth, it felt like. Despite the contrast, both men want the same thing. Who win this fisticuffs game seven and take control of one of boxing's most stacked divisions. I don't care about Ryan. I care about greatness. Ryan is just in my way. He's the guy that I got to step on. Which leads to one final difference. In the case of the savant versus the showman, both might want the same thing, but doing it is another thing entirely. All three episodes of 40 Days are available right now on the platform, also available on YouTube, and so much other great content as well surrounding this fight. By the way, Ak, uh, there, voicing it. Yeah. And his voice just goes deeper and deeper and deeper <laughs> as he does it. Anyway, look, Chris Mannix is ready. The undercard fighters are ready as well, so let's throw it over to Chris Mannix. Well, thank you, Addy. Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to the final press conference for the super lightweight world title showdown between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. I'm Chris Maddox. I'll be part of the DAZN broadcast team on Saturday at the Barclays Center when two of the biggest stars in boxing settle a long-standing and what has become a deeply personal rivalry when they face off at the WBC 140-pound championship live on DAZN Worldwide. Tickets still available here at the Barclays Center, so get them while they're still out there. In addition to a terrific fight, between Devin and Ryan. We have an excellent undercard featuring some of the top fighters in the 115, 168, and 140 pound divisions. To introduce the undercard, I want to invite up the chairman of Golden Boy Promotions, the Hall of Famer, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. All right, hello once again. Yeah, welcome everyone to the uh, event of the year. There is just something about a major fight in New York that hits a little different. And everywhere I've gone this week, people are super pumped for Haney versus Ryan Garcia. As a promoter, as a fighter, as a fan, I can't wait for this whole card. It is my pleasure to introduce the fighters who will put on a show for you come Saturday night. This next gentleman I will introduce to you, I am super, super excited about. 
He is an exciting prospect uh, in our Golden Boy roster. Darius Fulgham is poised to take over the division. He exudes such confidence and discipline in and out of the ring, a quality that has put him on track for a world title. I'm extremely proud and happy to introduce to you from Houston, Texas, with a record of 10-0, nine knockouts, Darius Fulgham, to say a few words, Darius. I just want to uh, tell everybody a little bit of my thoughts as I was just sitting here on the uh, on the podium. Is uh, I was looking up at the arena that we at, and I was just thinking, man, how how lucky I am to be here, right? So then I started thinking about the concept of luck, how lucky I am to be born into the family that I got, blessed by the support they have, to be lucky to met the people I met, to have the team that surrounds me, that pushes me, it builds me. Lucky I am to have the friends and the team that I have. Golden Boy has helped and push me and promote my career. Uh, I think about luck. I mean, how lucky am I? But then the main thing I think about also with that is, do I really believe in luck? You know, in moments like this, luck is really just when preparation meets opportunity. And I prepared my ass off for this. I prepare hard and, and I'm ready to showcase that to the world. Um, and I'm just extremely blessed, honored, and I guess lucky to be here. Um, thank you for y'all and I'll see y'all Two more nights, Saturday night. Thank you. Leading off our pay-per-view is a 10-round fight in the middleweight division that I am extremely proud of and excited about. It is my pleasure to introduce one of Golden Boy's latest star signings, who we have big plans for. But first, he has to get past Saturday night, which will be a big test against a veteran fighter of 30 fights in front of a pay-per-view audience and in front, of, in front of a sellout crowd. He is a U.S. Olympian with an outstanding undefeated record. He hails from Cleveland, Ohio with a record of 18-0 and 13 knockouts, making his Golden Boy debut, Charles Conwell. Charles. Uh, I just want to tell everyone I'm excited. I'm I'm back in the ring after a uh, long layoff. Um, I prepared real hard, and somebody got to pay for it. So I'm just excited to be here, and let's make it happen. We have big plans for Charles. Um, he's been a little inactive last year, but we have uh, plans to keep him busy. You know, I strongly feel um, <clears throat> Charles will will become a force to be reckoned with uh, in the middleweight division. He's hungry, he's focused, works hard, special talent. So we expect uh, we expect big things, big things from him. Um, next fight, the second fight on our pay-per-view uh, telecast live on the Zone, is a 12-round contest for the interim WBA flightweight title. In the blue corner is a Costa Rican native who fought all over the world and is now coming to Brooklyn with his eyes on a world title. He has a record of 15-1 and one with 11 knockouts. Let me introduce to you David Jimenez. David. Buenas tardes. Para mí es un honor estar nuevamente hoy acá en una cartelera de Golden Boy. Eh, me, me he sentido muy bien. Vengo bien preparado de Las Vegas, Nevada. Eh, no me han dado el trato que me merezco. Soy campeón mundial gol de la Asociación Mundial de Boxeo. Tengo mi récord, tengo mi experiencia como boxeador olímpico. Pero como siempre vengo a dar grande la batalla. Eh, este muchacho que está acá está haciendo su show. Yo vengo a forjar el futuro de toda mi familia. Y créanme que la noche será nuestra mañana y vamos a luchar incansablemente por el éxito, por el triunfo y que iba a Costa Rica. Pura vida. All right, thank you. It's an honor to be on the Golden Boy card again. I feel good. I had great preparation. I haven't been treated like the champion that I am. I'm also an Olympian. I deserve more respect. This is going to be a great battle. This man right here, my opponent, he's been putting on the show. I'm here for my family and to put on a great exhibition. 
Thank you very much. Gracias. Across the ring will be a young man that everyone at Golden Boy Promotions is super excited about and will be making his first run at a world title shot. Leading off the broadcast from my neck of the woods in Los Angeles, ladies and gentlemen, with a record of 13-0 and and nine knockouts, John Scrappy Ramirez. John. New York, what's up? <laughs> hey, make some noise, man. It's a little too dead up in here, you know what I'm saying? It's a big court. It's a big court. Pay-per-view, you know? And uh, it has the potential to be the biggest card of the year, you know? A lot of people are not counting us in, you know? Talking shit about us. It's cool. It motivates us. It's time for us to give him a show, you know? Oscar's doing a tremendous job promoting, putting good fights together. Uh, and we got to do our part. With that being said, uh, I do want to say this, though. Quote, unquote, they say I'm lucky. Well, Darius, you took my fucking words, bro. <laughs> That's when opportunity meets preparation, you know? I've been boxing for seven years. My main mission was to become a world champion. I didn't care about the amateurs. I had to do it, and I did it. But now I'm here, you know? I've been consistent and persistent chasing the dream. I sacrificed a lot, you know? I haven't cut corners. I've been disciplined, you know? And this is the life that I chose, you know? This man right here, he got, he got, he got what it takes. I know he's, uh... He's ready to put it all on the line. But guess what? That shit turns me on. I want that. To be good, you got to beat people like him, you know? So I'm prepared. I'm mentally, physically ready for whatever. Listen, I'm also happy to be part of this big card, right? But I'm not here to be part of this shit. I'm here to take over the show. So my people, welcome to the motherfucking Scrap Show. Yeah, don't sleep, don't sleep on this fight here. This is going to be a really, really exciting fight. Really looking forward to it. The third fight of our pay-per-view uh, will be a 10-round contest in the super middleweight division. And this is one you can't miss. All action. First up is an undefeated fighter from France who has an amazing opportunity to shine on the biggest pay-per-view of the year with a record of 22-0 and 12 knockouts, I introduce to you Pierre de Bam. Pierre. So, hello everyone. Excuse my English because I'm from France, so my English is not very good. I'm very excited to be here. My preparation was very good. I'm uh, glad Golden Ball gave me the, this opportunity and uh, we'll make a a good fight. I know he's a good fighter. I'm a great fighter too. So, let's go. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Pierre will be facing a fighter who always brings huge power and excitement to the ring. He is truly the definition of a wrecking ball who likes to roll over everything in his path. With a record of 13-1, and one, with 10 knockouts, and he avenged that loss against um, against my boy, right, Rosado. Yeah, which was great. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Beck the Bully Melakusev. Beck. Salam alaikum. Hello, everyone. Albatta bugun nimalida? Kotta showda tushayotganimdan juda ham xursandman. Albatta shunday ishonch bildirgan uchun Golden Promotion iga Oscar Hopkins hammasiga rahmat aytaman. Xudo xolasa nima deydi, yaxshi jang ko'rsatib, chiroyli g'alaba ko'rsatishga albatta harakat qilaman. Saturday bully time. Inshallah. Thank you. Hello everyone, thank you so much for being here. I want to thank Oscar for this opportunity, thank Bernard for this opportunity, and it's a huge show, I'm glad to be part of it, and you know, when I'm in the ring, it's a bully time. Let's go Saturday. Yeah, this fight here, you don't want to, you, you don't want to blink your eye, man. This is, this is going to be a good, good fight. Really entertaining fight. Our co-main event is one that I'm really, really excited about as well. It's a 10-round battle in the junior welterweight division 
with the winner being poised, positioned for a championship title fight. First off, from Belfast, with a record of 18 and 1, with five knockouts, and riding a seven fight winning streak, Sean, the public nuisance, McComb. Sean. Uh, firstly, I want to thank Golden Boy for this opportunity. Um, just like Oscar said before the press conference about Rocky Balboa, this is a, a real Rocky Balboa situation for me. And to be given this opportunity, I believe I need to grab it with both hands. I've done all the work mentally and physically. I'm ready. And come Saturday night, I'm here to appear on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. In the red corner will be a recent Golden Boy signee who has impressed everyone in the company from the moment he signed with us. He is undefeated, he is fearless, he is extremely skilled, and has a world championship in his sights. With a record of 29 and 0, 11 knockouts, Arnold Barbosa Jr. Arnold. Uh, first off, you know, I want to thank God, you know, who strengthens me without him, you know, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Um, next, I want to thank Oscar, you know, B-Hop, Eric, and the whole Golden Boy team for putting t uh, together this tremendous event, for doing all the promoting, for doing all the, all the, all the hard work. Um, next, uh, as for me, man, um, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited for the opportunity to be on, you know, the biggest card of the year. You know, I think all eyes are going to be on me uh, on our fight. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm, from, since I was five and a half years old, you know, just a kid from the from the city of Friendly El Monte, you know what I mean? Uh, and I got, I know, got some, some of my people in the house that, that flew down from the city, you know, amazing support, you know, um, but I have a saying, you know, that um, I'm forever grateful, but I'm never satisfied. You know what I mean? I'm forever grateful. I'm grateful to be here, but I ain't satisfied. You know what I mean? I want my name to say, instead of Haney Garcia, it's going to be Barboza versus everybody. You know what I mean? So um, with that being said, let's see you guys Saturday night, and best believe it's going to be a fucking good show. See you guys. Just so you know, every fighter, every every participant here, one loss, undefeated. This is your time to shine. I'm talking like a fighter right now. It's time to shine. It's time to be on the big stage and give it all you have. This is the opportunity. So, good luck, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you in the ring. Mannix. Thank you, Oscar. A reminder: tickets still available at the Barclays Center. The prelims begin 5 o'clock Eastern Time, 2 Pacific on DAZN Worldwide. We're going to reset the stage now for a moment and come back with the main event, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. For now, Ade, we'll throw it back to you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed hearing from Scrappy Ramirez uh, and Arnold Barboza Jr. But yes. let's talk about Scrappy. He's in a really good fight. Ariel against David Jimenez. It's a big step up. He's close to a world title fight. He didn't have to take this one, but he wants to stay active. This is, this could be a banana skin. This is a 50-50 fight for me. Squeaky bum time, squeaky right? Squeaky bum time. Because sweaty palms. There's so many different... All those things. I've never heard those. You never heard, never heard of squeaky oh. bum time? Well, we were, the, the, the banana pit, banana we were just pit. talking about this before. <laughs> like, he doesn't necessarily have to take this fight. And... And I don't want to steal your thoughts, but you said, like, it's a very close fight, right? So you, you, you take this fight. You show you want to be active. You know, he's a great showman. He's got a great look. He's a fun fighter. But you slip. Now these big plans in Japan, these title fights that you're looking forward to, aren't coming your way, right? No, it's, I think this is going to be the fight of the night as far as the undercard goes. It's a very dangerous fight for Scrappy Ramirez, but I love the fact that he took this fight. Golden Boy Promotions doesn't mess around with their matchmaking. They put their guys in tough. So this is a type of fight that can easily get out of hand, not only for the promoter, but for Scrappy. But credit to him for taking it. Yeah, keep your eyes on this one. I'm looking at that fight line up there, and there's a lot of guys on there that just... Uh, and need him wins. Obviously, Charles Conwell's been out of the ring for nearly two years. Uh, Melikuzia, for some reason, people still refer to the fact he got knocked out by Rosado. Even though he has three fights since then and won, there's a lot of people on this card that need to prove something to people. I was just going to say, I feel like there's a lot of guys on this card with chips on their shoulders, right? Um, Conwell, coming back to your point, just signed with Golden Boy. He wants to prove that he's still, you know, very much a player in this sport. Um, Scrappy, I think, has a, a point to prove. Uh, Barbosa, I think, has a point to prove. He's also recently signed to Golden Boy. Like, I feel like there's a lot of guys on this card who are out to prove that they are worthy of being on big cards, 
big fights. Barbosa keeps saying, you know, I want to be up there. I'm 29 and 0. Why aren't I getting the big fights? Well, I've come to Golden Boy to get the big fights. Remember, he was at that press conference, the stop in LA, saying, you know, if one of these guys falls through, I want this fight. Yeah. And so there's a lot of guys here that I think are going to come out and show to the world because let's be honest, more people will be watching this card than maybe some of the other cards that they've been on that they belong here. And you love that because they're going to bring their A game, hopefully. They certainly will bring it on Saturday night. Saturday night's not the only big night coming your way on the zone. We have plenty more big nights coming your way. Hey champ, I know why you're here. You're a born winner, the top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your wheeze. And you know the zone's got over 150 fights every year. Over 150. Proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comebacks, the non-stop knockouts. Big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone, undisputed. Yeah, so many big fights coming your way Saturday, April 27th. It is Ramirez versus Barfilami. Hernandez versus Lugo, May 11th. And this one, a lot of people have been waiting for this one. Taylor versus Jack Cattrall is on May 25th. And I think they're one of the biggest fight cards we've seen in years. The five versus five. And let's not forget, that is headline versus Dimitri Vivol versus Artur Baturbia for the undisputed light heavyweight title. Oscar De La Hoya, looking very sharp in brown, Thank you. joins us now. Hey, that's a very good undercard, by the way. Yeah, so is. many fighters on that card with something to prove, wanting to take that next step very, very close to world title fights. Right. Um, yeah, every fighter has maybe one loss or undefeated. Um, I think that I think the undercard is going to be super exciting. Um, and I told these guys, as a fighter, not as a promoter, mm. as a fighter, I told them, look, you have an opportunity to shine. Let it out. Just that night and just go out all out you know take care of business this is your time to shine and they understand that it's gonna be good it's gonna be fun i want to ask you about charles conwell we were just talking about him he's had some uh, promotional managerial yeah. issues just signed with you very recently yeah. and has talked about this being the fresh start for him sure. what was it about him that made you want to bring him and do you think that we have seen the best of him so far well we we haven't seen the best of him i, I strongly feel that yes he did have some some issues with his team uh, but that's all in the past. Um, the division he's in, it's, it's an exciting division. I, I strongly feel that uh, he can be a, a force to be reckoned with in that division. He's undefeated. He's hungry. He's, uh, he's got like a fresh start. He wants to st he's an Olympian. I mean, what else do you want? Right. All that, all that experience. So I strongly feel that he will be, uh, he will be a, a world champion uh, very soon, possibly next year. I was talking to Ariel about how, you know, match, matchmaking at Golden Boy, you guys don't really, you, you want the best fight and the best and the best for the fans. And the David Jimenez fight against Scrappy Ramirez, right. that's going to be an exciting oh, fight. Yeah. That's a 50-50 type right. fight. And Arnold Barboza getting in there. I mean, excellent undercard. I mean, just I applaud uh, Team Golden Boy for the matchmaking thank you, thank that you guys and do. Yeah, we, we, try to, we try to just give the fans, you know, some great fights. That's the bottom line. And obviously the opportunity to the fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, that he deserves, but also the opponent. You know, we don't treat the opponents right. like opponents. Right. They're real fighters. These are real fights. That's why they're undefeated. That's why they have maybe one loss, and there's no shame to that. Um, I strongly feel that this is what boxing needs. This is what we must do as, as, a, as a community, a boxing community, and come together, promoters, managers, fighters, and just make the best fights happen. That's it. Uh, the stage behind us is getting set for Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia to make their way. Let's talk about Ryan Garcia, the elephant in the room, Oscar De La Hoya. You've obviously worked with him. You know his personality better than most. Um, have you been concerned with what Ryan's been putting out there in the last few weeks? Where is your mindset when looking at Ryan Garcia right now? Well, look, social media and, and reality is, are, are two different things. Yeah. Um, I see Ryan. He's in great shape. And on weight, I see Ryan just focused. When he trains, he trains. When he posts social media, that's his time to do whatever he wants to do. I don't obviously control that. Um, but Ryan's ready. It's his big opportunity. This is uh, the one that counts, number seven. They're three and three in the amateurs. They know each other very well. Ryan's very confident he is going to beat Devin Haney. Yeah, and it's, it's a massive fight as well for Ryan. And He's in big fights, and that's what we've wanted to see, isn't yeah. it? But what kind of pressure on Ryan to win one of these super fights? Well, there must be a lot of pressure in order to get to the top. Without the pressure, you really can't, you really can't make it. You need that pressure. And so it's not that Ryan puts it on himself, but 
everybody puts it on his back, which is a great thing because it makes you work harder. It makes you stay focused. It makes you, it makes you take care of business. Um, I think Ryan Garcia is doing what he's doing best. That's promoting. That's fighting. He's fighting against the best. I love the fact that we made this fight happen. Mm -hmm. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia. When, does, when, when do you have two young fighters in their prime fighting against each other? Only on the Golden Boy card. Yes. <laughs> That's what you No, and get. you know what it's going to remind me of, Oscar, when you fought I Corte. Yeah. I mean, both of you guys had great jabs, great left hands. Yeah. Both of you guys got dropped. You had to show a lot of adversity to come back to win that fight. That was one of my, my favorite fights of yours. I was there live. Thank you. And I think that's exactly what this fight is going to look like. He's, both these men are going to have to face adversity. That yeah. left hand is going to be big. Who's going to take the better punch? I, I think so. And I think so. And obviously, you know, firsthand, I hope it starts like De La Hoya I Corte and it ends up like Mosley De La Hoya won. <laughs> which was a which was a barn burner, which was a war. So, look, we have a lot of ingredients here to really make it a classic fight. Mm -hmm. And I think both guys know what they're up against. I think both guys know exactly what's in front of them. Ryan winning, he becomes he becomes practically the face of boxing. If you think about it, there's Ryan Garcia, there's Canelo Alvarez, and there's uh, um, um, Anthony Joshua. There's you know several Anthony Aaron's Joshua, Crawford. but pay per view stars mm -hmm. in America. Yeah, you don't Great. get right. any better than Ryan Garcia. I'm fascinated by your relationship with Ryan. The last time he fought in Houston, it was very awkward up there. Let's be honest. Yesterday at the open workouts, you're there tying his shoes. Right. How did we get here <laughs> in four months from you guys hey. being all awkward? And now all of a sudden you're tying his shoes at the open workouts. How did you get to this point? Hey, maybe I'm growing up. I don't know. Who knows? And maybe he is as well. Exactly. Look, uh, look, the past is the past. We're looking towards the future. I think Ryan Garcia gets it. I think Ryan Garcia knows his position in the sport of boxing. You know, not only can he become a celebrity, not only can he become a world champion, but he can become an icon if he wants to. Ryan Garcia is the one who's fighting the top guys. Who Think about it. He fought Tank. He gets a win against Oscar Duarte, which was a tough fight, tough Very fighter. Tough. And then now he's fighting Devin Haney. Who does that now? The, I mean, we did that back in the 90s, yeah. but now not today. So I, I commend Ryan Garcia for, for making this fight happen. I commend Devin Haney for, for, for working with us and making this fight happen. So, yeah, let's get it on. We just saw um, Ryan Garcia versus Oscar Duarte on the pictures there. That was his first fight with Derek James. Uh, how difficult is the procedure to get in sync with a new coach? How long does that take? It, it depends. It depends on the chemistry. It depends. Um, it depends on how much you want it as mm. well. How much you want to absorb. In my career, I had, I believe, what six, seven trainers, and I, I just soaked up everything from each and every single trainer, mm. and it worked for me. Yeah. And sometimes it didn't. Um, it all depends on the fighter, the mentality. I think that Ryan Garcia, he he defends Derek James. He loves Derek James. He loves the way he works. I think they're a good dynamic, a good team. We spoke about earlier. Sorry, we spoke about earlier about how good it is to see fights back at the Barclays. Yeah. You know, most fights, as you know, T-Mobile, a lot of them going to Saudi. Sure. It's good to see a fight back here in Brooklyn. No, it's great. It's great to be here in New York. Um, I, I promoted tons of fights here yeah. at Barclays Center. Um, you know, with the likes of uh, De uh, Deontay Wilder and you know the Charlo brothers and all of you know uh, Porter, every single one. We had some great moments, great times here, and this is a great arena, great, great city for boxing. Yeah, indeed. Oscar, thank you very, very thank much. Uh, so many fantastic pieces out there right now about Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. This one, I especially like. Take a look at this. This is beef. Beef. Not that kind of beef. This kind of beef. It's a beef. He's a fucking racist. He's a You may have noticed that at his own, we like a good stare down. Whatever the fight, whatever the country, we love looking at people looking at each other. Oh, look at this one. Now, and that's a real stare down. Sometimes the staring can get intense. Oh, there we go. Whoa. That's when the old beef comes out. Hey, young messing with these bums now. And in the latest all new 2024 installment of Beef, we have two intriguing main characters. Hey, I'm Ryan Garcia, and this is Disney Channel. And you're watching, no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Ryan Garcia. He's playing the part of the contender. Somebody with charisma, somebody who has looks. Ryan's coming up against the champ, Devin Haney. I'm taking you down, Ryan. 
and with some help from ring card girls, a throne, and yes, a real life horse, our two young bulls squared off for their very own stare down. And of course, there was B. Like most beef, there is history here. But this beef is very rare. Ryan and Devin have known each other for most of their lives. Both these guys came up in the amateur ranks. They first shared an amateur ring when they were nine or ten years old. We fought each other at every major tournament. You know, he won the early fights. I won the later fights. So tell me, were you friends back then? Yeah, we were friends a little bit. In February of 2020, Devin Haney, who had a belt at the time, climbed in the ring. That's some good-natured trash talk between each other. I said that's it, right? That'd be me to become champ. I'll get to you. I'll get to you. Let's make it happen. I'll get to you. Let's get that ready. Let's go. You never at any point in time thought that Devin and Ryan didn't like each other. I mean, I think Ryan is good for boxing. Um, he brings entertainment to the sport. I'm proud of him. I've known him since I was young, so to see him where he's at, you know, respect. So how did it get from that to this? You're not my friend. Remember that. You're not my friend. Your dad's a pimp, and he pimping you. Well, the answer is this face-off and a supporting cast of characters that love stirring the pot. Hi, I'm Bill Haney, Devin Haney's father the best fighter in the world, and you might know me from the internet. Ah, Bill. Father, promoter, trainer. And in 2024, a wind-up merchant. Bill was so upset at that face-off, he took his grievances online. Team Garcia, I don't know what got into you the last time I saw you, but you better tell that muscle head, meat head, fresh on the scene, Barracuda, looking... Pops started name calling. His name's not Barracuda, it's Gaines. Put some respect on his name. That was Gaines after being called Barracuda. Is he okay? No, he's not. He's going through a lot of stress. He's really hurt by that. He put his filthy paws on one of ours, and I had to call in Tank. I didn't want to do it. It's something that you don't do unless it's special. Is this real or not? Because the Barracuda is he wasting his time. Sometimes it's fighter versus fighter. But this time, it's camp versus camp. All this chaos from a tiny bit of name calling. That and all the other talk. Ryan Garcia has now endorsed a new product. Shay. Butter. Shea butter. Shea butter is a good lotion. I use the lotion. Ryan Garcia obviously uses the lotion. Mm, 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 mm. It's news to me that you can put it in your hair. Gun. I could fix it more, but like, and then I just add texture spray. Shea butter don't go in your hair, Ryan. What are you doing? Bill Haney is an entertainer. His vice, I guess, is going on Instagram and poking the bear. What is that sh thing you rolling? I didn't see you roll it on your face. And I think that Bill is a marketing genius. What he's doing is, is just hilarious. We're in this wild story of boxing, and the bigger the characters, the bigger the promotion, the better the narrative, and the bigger the fight. Bill's strategy? Wind up the guy who was popular on social media. Ah! Rather drink Coca Cola than prom. Do you plan out your social media strategy? I wait for him to tweet and delete, and I show up, and you know what happens from there. Do you think Devin should do the talking and not Bill? Yes, of course. Dude, you're a grown man. It's time you start acting like one. Ryan Garcia is a, is a TikToker, a YouTuber. He's an actor. We've seen him in, you know, commercials, you know, doing skits and stuff like that. You know what they say about you? They say you're an actor. Yeah, damn right. I know I act my ass off. You want to see me improv right now? I'm a f actor. Give me a scene. All right, I got it. Bill, it's 
Devin. He's not waking up. Bill, I'm serious. Let's, let's scratch out the boxing balls. He's not waking up. F you. And see. See? I'm an actor. He's right. So after months of buildup, one of boxing's strangest ever beefs gets settled in the ring. This drama is different because you have to kind of figure out what's real and what's not. The dissolution of their friendship has come on rather quickly. All I know is that for right now, it's real. Like they do not like each other. And given that the trash talk has covered everything from horses to hair product, we can expect one hell of a show on April 20th, live only on the zone. Who, who doesn't like a little bit of beef, especially when it's real? I hate when it's um, manufactured and fabricated. Not when like Impossible real. Burgers. No one likes that. No, They're well, like the real deal Holyfield. Yeah, 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 yeah. the real deal indeed. Uh, we are awaiting the arrival of Devin Haney, so we're a little bit behind here. Devin Haney and his entourage, which will probably fill out the whole Barclays, <laughs> are going to arrive in a few moments. So let's talk about the main card. We've done oh, the yeah. undercard. Let's talk about the main card. Devin Haney, let's start with him first, the champion. I only think it's right that we start with the champion. I think the best 140-pounder out there as well. How impressed, Sergio, have you been with his rise in the last, say, two, three years, where he started to pick up some really big highlight wins? No, Devin Haney has been incredible. I mean, he's fighting champion after champion. Uh, you have to give him credit for that. If you look at his resume, it's already, you know, headed towards the championship uh, Hall of Fame resume at 25 years old. Probably it's, already is. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, and two-time undisputed. It's incredible. And the fact that he's doing it in loaded divisions, he's not, he's not just picking up uh, vacant title belts or he's beating uh, a, a fighter that, that is not the top dog. He's beating the big dogs. And he's going to their country in Cambosis. He's going over there, you know, back to back to fight him. He's fighting Vasily Lomachenko, future Hall of Famer, the Matrix that no one wants to fight. And then at 140, he's going to have his hands full, too. I mean, he started off with Regis Progre, but there's a lot of big dogs there from Matias to Teofimo Lopez. I mean... You got to give him a lot of credit because every time he he takes a test, he passes it with flying colors. And, you know, I'll just say that I think boxing is better because Devin Haney is competing in it. And what I mean by that is this is a guy that said, hey, at one time in my career, matchroom is the best place for me. All right. Now I need to go over to top rank right. and I need to get the Cambosis fight and I'll go back there and beat him again. And then he's like, all right. I'll go back to matchroom. And then he's like, all right, now I'll do this deal with Golden Boy. Who's doing that in boxing these days? He is going where the biggest fights are. He's not saying, oh, come to me. I'm the man. He puts his ego aside, his dad as well. They make the best, biggest fights time and again. He moves up to 140, gets rid of his belts, says, all right, Regis Progre, biggest fight for me. Let me get that belt. Now what's the next big fight? It's Ryan Garcia. Time and again, he is proving that he is all about that smoke. He wants it. Some people are running away from it. Some people are playing coy. Some people are playing games, hiding behind the politics. Devin doesn't do that. And then when you get to the fight, you know, I, I was talking to Oscar yesterday, and he, uh, he said that he thinks that Ryan is under Devin's skin, that he's in his head. He shoved him. He went to the throat. To me, yes, in that moment, he might have gotten under his skin. But Devin Haney is such a professional. Mm -hmm. He is so tactical. He is such a, a precise sniper out there. I don't think he fights emotionally, and I don't care what Ryan has said about him or to him leading up to this fight. He is such a credit to boxing because when it comes down to it, he fights with his mind and not with his heart. And it's a real pleasure to watch him compete. I will say this from the boxing standpoint. I feel that there were still question marks because of the Vasily Lomachenko win, defeat. A lot of people had it really close. Obviously, he got rocked in the Jorge Linares fight. I think the Regis pro great performance is the one that kind of catapulted him up to pound for pound status, where everyone's like, okay. This 100%. guy is legit. Oh my because, God. I mean, it's being, the way he won. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, the way he won. It he was a he shutout. Pretty much shut out, shutout. Yeah, on two cards. It was yeah. a shutout. Then he, he lost one round on another judge. That's incredible. Mm. Especially against a hard punching southpaw like Progre. I mean, Haney was just able to outclass him. I mean, the only thing that is more impressive than. You know, getting a knockout, a highlight reel knockout, is pitching a shutout. Devin Haney did it. I mean, that's incredible. Pitching a shutout against the champion. Yeah. It's and one moving thing, up and one weight. one thing being the champion. You're and right. moving right. up and weight. There's so many uh, ticks on in, in that uh, box for him. But mm -hmm. 
he is incredible, isn't he? I mean, and he's very big for 140 pounds as well. Let's not forget, against Progre, he came into the ring 161 pounds. This isn't his final stop. No. He, no. He, yeah. he will get to 147, maybe even 154 by the time it's all said and done. And that was a big deal for him, right? He moved up in weight, but also that whole show was built around him. Yeah. You know what I mean? He wasn't the B-side on mm -hmm. that show. He wasn't fighting in a neutral venue. That was back at the Bay for him. That was a really big deal, and he proved that he was a draw. They sold Chase Center out. That was a huge deal. First time that that venue, the home of the Golden State Warriors, has a big boxing event. And he pitches a shutout. I thought up until that point, his most impressive performance was the first fight against Cambosis. Mm. All the way in Australia, right? This one surpassed it. That was virtuoso, masterclass stuff. And, you know, not to get ahead of ourselves here, but I think we're primed to see more of that come Saturday. Yeah, that was the performance that put him in the pound-for-pound pound list. It wasn't the Cambosa Sunday. Too late, though, by the way. Lomachenko. I agree, he should have been in there already, but it is so deep. Let's talk about Ryan. There's also a flip side. Oh, my God. Point. How much time do we have? I, mean, I, yeah, I think we've got about 10 minutes to talk about Ryan. Uh, what have you made of Ryan all week? I spoke to Sergio about it yesterday. I haven't spoke to you yet. Ryan all month. He came on your show yeah. uh, about a month ago, didn't yeah. he? What did you make of him from then until now? Okay, so I'll be a thousand percent honest with you guys. I, I don't even expect that. Please okay. Do. Yeah. I have long loved and admired and rooted for Ryan Garcia. When he was the guy during the pandemic with the ball on his head and doing all those fun videos, like this was the young, fresh face of boxing. And I love the fact that he went after Tank Davis and he said, you know what, I'll take the hydration clause and I'll take the weight class that you want and I won't take a rematch and all that stuff. And then I love the fact that he took the Duarte fight. And there was some troubling signs leading up to that fight with Oscar and Bernard, but it was all kind of fun. It was good promotion. When he sat down in front of me, just keeping it 100, I was concerned. When he sat down in front of me on my show on that Monday, which really kicked everything off, he looked like someone who had been up all night. And so, you know what? He's a young guy in New York. That's fine. But every step leading up to this fight, there have been other concerns. Now, I saw him yesterday with you guys. He looks to be in amazing shape. And I like the chip on his shoulder. And I like the fact that he is not the sort of coddled PR vessel that he once was. He's saying what he feels. He's letting it all out. But my question is, and my concern is, when you go up against someone like Devin Haney, you have to be 1,000% locked in. And who's the one that's telling him, hey, Ryan, today, let's put the phone away? Who's the one that's telling him, hey, Ryan, tonight, let's not go out? Who's the one that's actually keeping him in check? I don't know who that person is. Mm. I have some serious doubts about that i think ryan garcia could be one of the best fighters on the planet i know he doesn't have a belt and he hasn't won one yet but i have concerns about where he's at going into this fight because devin haney is not the guy to mess around with he is not the guy that you could take your foot off the gas and so yes i'll answer all the questions troubling concerns all that stuff if he does not come in 100 percent locked in on saturday this is not going to be a long fight devin haney is going to make an example out of him one thing i will say him standing right next to us he's in shape so although it looks like there are, you know, images of him going out. He's physically and in shape. Physically, physically he looks but fantastic. Is he, but, but is he have it in here? Is he focused? I mean, yeah. any, you talk to any boxer, especially when you're, you're, you're on the championship level with so much eyes on you, so much attention. When you just come off a, 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 a tough win with uh, Oscar Duarte and then a knockout, embarrassing loss with uh, Tank Davis. I mean, you have a lot to prove. All lies are on you. And then when you're acting erratic, it's concerning, to say the least, concerning. But if he can shut all that out and still win that's how he becomes a mega star he's already a star but that's how you become just you prove doubters wrong that's when greatness starts you start using the word great because only great fighters can can actually shut critics out like that and and i thought the critics were actually unfair towards ryan garcia after the duarte fight like i didn't think that performance was as bad as people were making it out to be first time with Derek james coming off his first stoppage loss like you got to give the guy some credit he mm -hmm. needed to get his mojo back his confidence back in the end, he got the stoppage win. He needed to get that win. He needed to get a nice, emphatic victory, and I thought he did it. Of course, there were things that you can nitpick, and of course, you know, the shoulder roll stuff wasn't right. something that we had seen from him in the past. But overall, I felt like people, and in general, this has been the case towards him, they were unfair. Look at Ryan. Everything I said about Devin Haney, you could say about Ryan. He searches the big fights. He could have two more easy fights after Duarte, and people wanted to bat an eye. And what did he say? He said, no. Give me this one. I'll take this one. And if not, who, who is it going to be? Isak Cruz, Roly Romero? Like, that's the stuff that we were hearing about, yeah. right? And so I think he deserves a lot of credit. I just pray and I hope for his sake that all of this has been a work, that all of this has been a big troll. It's been the greatest work ever it is. I pray that that is the case because, like I said, you could get away with some of that stuff when you're fighting lesser opponents. Mm -hmm. You can't get away with it when you're fighting the Haney's. Yeah, I mean, Ryan Garcia's demeanor all week has been interesting. Devin Haney, though, has been locked in. I mean, he's 100% locked in, and it's credit to Bill Haney and the team as well. Shout out to Ben Davison 
and Lee Wiley that do a fantastic job for him as well. But this is Devin Haney right now at the top of his game. Again, pound for pound, I can't see him worse than number six. And he wants everything. He, he wants to go down as the greatest fighter of all time. And look, it's a long way to go, but right now he's on an upward trajectory to it. They groomed Devin Haney from great, for greatness. I mean, uh, the, the way that Bill Haney, his father, mentor, coach, They've taken him from trainer to great trainer all over the country, from Vegas to up north to L.A. to Tijuana to become to turn pro. I mean, this is how you groom a fighter for everything. And he's not going to be shocked by by the lights. He's ready for these bright lights. That's the reason, you know, a fighter like Devin Haney, he was he was born for this moment. And they just like I said, they groomed them perfectly. And when you add the chip on his shoulder and the fact that, you know, they know each other so well from the amateurs, there's familiarity there. And the fact that, you know, now it's the pro game. Amateurs and pros are a totally different game. So this is all about focus, who's more prepared, who's more disciplined, who can follow a game plan all the way to the end. Right now, you look at Devin Haney and say, that's the one I think that that's going to be the favorite for, for a reason. I was looking at his resume earlier, Ariel, when it started. I look at, you know, obviously you're going to have easy fights early. That's, that's what kind of what boxing does, right, the first 15. Since that, then, you look at Abdullayev. Again, you mentioned George Gambosos. Gamboa was chucked in there as well. Jorge Linares, Vasily Lomachenko, Regis Progre, Ryan Garcia. He's only 25. Yeah. 31 and 0. I mean, I, I, I like this activity. Plus, he guarantees you two fights a year. Which, unfortunately, in the world of boxing, as we know, the superstars don't give you two fights a year. They give you one if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're lucky, you get one, right? He's giving you two fights a year, and he's been doing that for the last four years. I like that. I absolutely love it. Imagine being a teenager and fighting all those fights in Tijuana, right? Going over there and doing that. Like, <laughs> what kind of tough. Yeah, what kind yeah. of a scene is yeah. that <laughs> for a youngster, yeah. right? And I know he has his dad by his side, and I love their relationship. And, and again, what I love so much about him is that he is so professional. He is yeah. not... You know, he's not a showman. He doesn't talk a lot of trash. He doesn't always make it about himself. But he goes out there almost workmanlike, and he gets the job done. And so I actually want to ask you guys a question. When you saw him push Ryan on Tuesday, a little bit out of character for him, right? And so that's a credit to Ryan. Ryan did get under his skin in the moment, and he made it very personal. He kept talking about his mom. I don't know what that's all about. But clearly he's talking about family, and that's a line that a lot of people don't want you to cross. Do you think there is a chance that we see an emotional Devin Haney on Saturday and someone who isn't? No. Str okay. No, He's, I don't think so. Okay. I think, I so think it's when, just in that whenever, moment he got emotional. In but that moment, maybe to sell the fight a little bit, maybe uh, to, to send a message to Ryan. But, no, I just think you're dealing with a fighter that's way beyond his years. You know, aside from gifted and being talented, he, like I said, he was already he built for this. They already put him in this spot, and he's passed every test. And you and you forgot another champion when you're going down the list, Jojo Diaz. Course, Jojo yeah. Diaz, who's been, been in there with every everybody in there. So uh, he's, he's adapted well. He's handled being hurt. Well, I mean, he got rocked against Jojo. He got rocked against Linares, and he passed the test. You want to see how fighters react when they get hurt, when they get dropped. Now, mind you, on the flip side of that, Ryan Garcia passed that test, too, you know, when he got dropped with uh, Luke Campbell. Uh, these are questions that are only going to be answered inside the ring. But right now, you know, the focus and, and the hunger, the resume, the championship resume, you have to look at Devin Haney and say, yeah, he's a favorite for a reason. Now, Oscar spoke about the fact that he had several trainers during his career. Obviously, Ryan Garcia has had three Big ones already, and Eddie Reynoso, Joe Goosen, and now Derek James. And this is only in his last four fights. He's had three different trainers. I mean, we need to stick with one yeah. now, don't we? I mean, this switching of trainers, it can't be good. They're showing you completely different styles. I think we saw that against Oscar Duarte, where he's doing a bit of a shoulder roll. Like we, we've never seen that before. He needs to stick with one trainer now for the long time. Only, cer only certain fighters can get away with that. Oscar De La Hoya, like he mentioned, had half a dozen trainers. Even when he was having success and looked great in fights, he still would switch trainers. It's concerning. Anthony Josh was another fighter, yeah. another champion on the top level that goes from trainer to trainer. Even if he does have good performances and comes up short, he still moves on. You don't build, build chemistry. You don't build trust. And when the going gets tough and, and you need your corner, you need that voice, you're not going to trust that voice in your corner. So, I mean, Derek James is an amazing trainer. He's an incredible trainer. But you don't have any rapport. There's no history there. So if you can bet if Ryan Garcia is in the trenches getting hurt, getting rocked, bleeding, got dropped, that voice is going to be the most important voice, and he's going to be able to trust everything he says. I don't, I don't think they have enough time. This is so uh, – sorry it's to cut across you. We can see pictures of Ryan Garcia coming. It, it, it kind of goes back to your point about the relationship now with Oscar. Uh, you can't look past this. No. Remember back in Houston in December, 
Those two were up on the dais, and they were, like, making faces at each other. Remember on Fight Night, Oscar put out a post saying, I'm not allowed to go into his locker room. You can't be 100% if you're battling your promoter, if you're beefing with your promoter. By the way, what about the fact that here we are talking about Ryan? He's the first one up there. And there's something almost sort of magical about him just being up there by himself. I freaking love it. I love it. I love it. That shot right there is incredible, just him by himself there. Not only do I love that, he seems to be in a great place. He seems to be fresh. (laughs) I don't know what that's all about. I don't don't know know what he's showing. (laughs) So. Maybe, maybe get rid of that page. He seems to be in great spirits. But the thing is, he's also, like, look at his shape. He is he is muscular, right? Yeah. Like, he is fit. This isn't the same old young Ryan Garcia. Shout out to his Instagram page. I wonder what's on that Explore page there, Ryan. Yeah, right now. yeah everyone jumps on the Instagram right yeah. now. I don't think he knew he was live. I, I think he just thought he was showing it to the cameraman oh, there. Uh, Derek James uh, by his side as well. Uh, Ryan Garcia's dad on, on the center stage as well. It's interesting that Ryan is here first. No, he was the first one at the public workout uh, yeah. yesterday as well. You get, he went in there, he started shadow boxing, hitting the mitts, answering all the questions, and he was the first one there. So, look, you can throw the, the – he's not focused out the window. If he's in there when he's supposed to be, you know, in front of the cameras, answering the questions, he was the first one on the dais, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe, just maybe, he's crazy as a fox and can juggle all these things and prove everyone wrong. That's, that's by the way, the next relationship that needs to be repaired because, as far as I have heard, uh, Bernard and Ryan still – aren't good so hopefully in the redemption tour of one ryan garcia he could fix that one as well yeah g- give him time right Oscar yeah, yeah, took a while no, no, look, give look, him a couple more one. years that was the big one yeah. yeah a couple more years indeed a uh, big fight on saturday even bigger fight coming up may 18th for obviously years tyson fury versus alexander Usyk in riyadh saudi arabia for all the marbles in the heavyweight division just take a look at this live on the zone worldwide may 18th the fight of the century Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Tyson Fury looks to reign as king of the division. But Alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crown. For the first time in over 20 years, all the belts are on the line. Ring of Fire, live on the Zone Worldwide, May 18th. Look at this schedule coming your way. Obviously, kicks off on Saturday. Devin Haney defending his WBC Super Lightweight Championship belt against Ryan Garcia. And then May the 4th, Cinco de Mayo. Canelo Alvarez defending all the belts. 168 pounds when he takes on Jaime Mingia. And then the fight we just spoke about. Uh, Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. May 8th. That's a ridiculous schedule, by the way. I'm going to add one more as well there. Baturbia versus Bibble, June 1st. Five versus five undercard. Crazy schedule. Bam Rodriguez. Bam Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Captain Taylor. Yeah, so much, right? Oh, my God. Incredible. At five versus five, by the way. How incredible is that? Oh, my gosh. Well, the main event is incredible. Yeah. And then, look, I, I'm a pro wrestling fan. I know some people get mad when I talk about pro wrestling. But what's more pro wrestling than Deontay Wilder coming out as the captain of Team Matchroom? Crazy. That is like... 101 pro wrestling right yeah. there. So shout out to everyone who got that done. I still can't believe it. That picture of Eddie and uh, it's not real, Deontay shaking it's almost, hands. It almost looks photoshopped. Yes. Because they've been beefing yes. for, yeah, for so many years. Again, love that it. got prepared. So we are doing yes. a tour of Peace redemption. And love. Just, Peace and go. love, everyone. There you go. Incredible. Obviously, all that fight uh, kicks off this Saturday is from the Barclays Center, this magnificent arena home of the Brooklyn Nets. As I said, on Saturday, it will be taken over by boxing. We are waiting on the dream, Mr. Devin Haney, to arrive is, at Ryan Gosling. some mind games? I, I, maybe. Is he taking a page out of Tank Davis? Remember, maybe. Tank made him wait. Yeah, just like, turn year. up when I want to turn up. It's my show. That's I'm the A-side, right? I mean, I'm maybe. the B-dog. Yeah, you know, I think Devin Haney has proven a point. Maybe I don't know. There's, no, tra- there's no traffic kid. out there. He should be here. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? He, he should be here uh, to do it. Uh, by the way, Ryan looks in incredible shape. Yes. You don't wear one of those body top outfits if you know that you've got a couple of, you know, a bit of timber around the belly area. He's looking good, isn't he? What's that? Oh, what's he's, that? He's, what is going on what's now? He's, he's been walking, walking around. around. What's that? He's been walking around everywhere without a shirt. So yes, he's definitely confident. He filled out really nicely. He looks muscular. Uh, you know, he, he he looks like a 140 pounder. And I think, you know, a lot of people are questioning whether he'll make weight or not. I think he looks fantastic. Indeed. No, but really, what is? Oh, that? There, you go. Oh, there, there you go. is. There you go. Hey, is, is that with a Mexican flag? Is that? It was, is that? Oh, he's trying to be Don King. Is that Bill Haney? Bill Haney, Bill Haney like morphed King into Don there. King alongside Eddie Hearn. Look at this. This is, this is kind of a, a super team, though, isn't it? This it really is. I love it. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. It. And, and by the way, as someone who loves some of the drama, now we get Eddie and Oscar up there together. That's always very fun, right? What's with the Mexican flag? Though? I need to understand. Is it because yeah. he kind of started his pro career in Mexico? Like, what is this? I don't know, um, but he is looking very Don King-like with those two flags, <laughs> holding them up like that. 
I love it. Oh, and my Eddie dear. loves this as well because you know Eddie and Oscar go Eddie's back and forth. Eddie's got a nice little grin on his face over there. Eddie's like, just give me this mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll show you what I can do. But the team, the team is up there now. Devin Haney up there as well. I mean, it, this, this, this does feel special. And by the way, if Ryan Garcia is tricking all of us, then I think we're in for something special on Saturday night. If he really is tricking us, because, again, they're free and free in the amateurs. As um, Ariel said, this is game seven. And I think it could be a really, really good fight come Devin, Saturday. Devin Haney looking like a sniper out there with the black leather gloves and the shades. Like, he, he looks all business right now. He looks like he is not here to mess around. Um, I think the dynamic up here is going to be fantastic. I think the face-off is going to be fantastic. There's no love lost between these two. Yes, they have fought, you know, six times in the amateur scene, it's not because they're good friends that they did that. They were always kind of rivals. They were always kind of circling each other. Now they do it on the biggest stage of them all for the WBC title that you see right over there. Ah, this is great theater. This is great. Uh, Devin Haney's taking his seat. Oscar De La Hoya is about to take his seat. So I think it's perfect time to throw over to your MC for this one, Mr. Chris Mannix. Thank you, Adam. Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome back to the final press conference for the super lightweight world title showdown between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. I'm Chris Mannix. I'll be part of the Zone broadcast team on Saturday at Barclays Center when two of the biggest stars in boxing settle a long-standing and what has become a deeply personal rivalry when they face off for the WBC 140-pound championship live worldwide on DAZN. This card starts at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Five Pacific tickets are available still here at Barclays Center. Well, this fight is a marquee event on what has been an unrivaled schedule here on DAZN. On Saturday, Ryan and Devin will meet at Barclays Center. Two weeks later, we'll see the return of Canelo Alvarez, who will defend his undisputed super middleweight championship against Jaime Munguia. And two weeks after that, the big one, the undisputed heavyweight championship between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk live in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Representing DAZN today is the Vice President of Marketing, Mr. Alfie Sharman. Hi everyone, um, it's great to be here, it's a brilliant atmosphere, I've really got um, a big fight feel uh, which, is, which is fantastic. Um, fight week is finally here, um, the talking is nearly, is nearly over, um, the promotion has been incredible, I want to extend thanks to our partners all up here on stage for their efforts uh, and coming together to make this fight happen as it should be on the zone on Saturday night. Look, I'm going to keep this brief because the world and myself included are eager to hear from the two fighters. Um, but I will say this, I don't think it gets much bigger than Saturday night in the heart of New York at the Barclays Center. Two absolute superstars of the world of boxing, elite, young, hungry, with a history and a score to settle. But this one counts. Um, and on Saturday night, we'll find out who's going to reign supreme at 140. I want to wish both teams and, of course, both men the absolute best of luck. Um, as Chris said, um, this kicks off an unrivaled schedule on the zone. Canelo Alvarez, Jaime Munguia, May 4th. Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk, May 18th. Announced just this week the 5v5 headlined by Betabiev and Dmitry Bivol on June 1st. Um, fights every week in the months ahead. So come and join us ringside at the zone, the global home of boxing, for those fights and possibly the fight of the year, um, possibly the pick of the bunch in Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. This Saturday, do not miss it. Um, live only on the zone. Thank you and enjoy. Well, two of the biggest stars in boxing are on stage today, and they're guided by two of the biggest promoters as well. And no promoter recognized the talent of Devin Haney any earlier than Eddie Hearn, who made Haney one of Matchroom USA's first signings, and he guided Haney to his first world title. And in December, promoted the fight that saw Devin become a two division world champion. I'd like to invite up the chairman of Matchroom Boxing, Mr. Eddie Hearn. Thank you, Ryan. I was going to say so many nice things about you, Ryan. Come on, keep it Maybe going, we'll change yeah. that. Um, we already know who you're rooting for, but boo! Okay, so firstly, I want to just echo what Alfie said, and Oscar will know, and Golden Boy will know, the journey that we've been on with the zone. Just to... 10 seconds to recognize just what they have done for boxing, the unrivaled home of boxing. There is no major fight scheduled coming up that has not been secured by DAZN as a platform. This is a tremendous fight this Saturday, of course, as we said, Canelo against Munguia on DAZN, Fury against Usyk on DAZN, 
the 5v5 on the zone. Bivol better be on the zone. So well done, Alfie and the team, the zone, the unrivaled home of boxing. Now, this fight, um, thank you so much to, to Oscar and the Golden Boy team for the opportunity. And the man to my left, well done. I can't believe we're 48 hours away. Let's just make sure we make it here on Saturday night for what will be a thrilling night. This place will be absolutely jumping. And as the fight draws closer, we start to realize just what we have ahead of us. A fight between two tremendous young superstars of the sport who will meet in a ring here at a Barclays Center live on the zone. Well done to, to Derek and everybody for making it here. But I've got to say, this man on my right never ceases to amaze me. Ability, skill is one thing. Work ethic, mindset, the way you carry yourself is everything. Bill, congratulations. The job that you have done from Devin from day dot. And you know, Chris Mannix talks about the job that we did and we're believing in you. No, you believed in him from a years and decades beyond that. Devin, you are a class act. In my opinion, you are the face of this sport for many, many years to come. This is just another moment for you to show your greatness, your dedication, the way you carry yourself. You are a credit to the sport of boxing, to the Haney name, to the WBC, and it is an honor to be up here working with you. So everybody on Saturday night, get ready for what will be a thrilling night. And Ryan, again, jokes aside, thank you for your energy, because the promotion that you have given this fight has been unbelievable. Baffling, but unbelievable. And I cannot wait for you two to face off in a very, very important fight for the sport. Saturday night, wherever you are in the world, tune into the zone and watch these two great fighters go at it. And once again, see why Devin, Devin Haney will control this sport for a long time. He's going to show you why he is, in my opinion, the future, if not the face of boxing. Thank you and enjoy a great show on Saturday. Well, there are few people that understand talent as well as Oscar De La Hoya, the Boxing Hall of Famer, who in addition to his own decorated career has built numerous world champions in his two decades as a promoter. Under Golden Boy, Ryan Garcia has become one of the biggest stars in boxing and will look to add world champion to his resume on Saturday. Please welcome the chairman of Golden Boy Promotions, the Golden Boy himself, Oscar De La Hoya. Thank you very much once again. Uh, before we start, I have, a, uh, I have a little gift for you guys from my good friend uh, Jeff Hamilton, who uh, created some beautiful, beautiful uh, leather jackets for you for this fight to commemorative, um, which is wow. incredible. Okay. Devin, for you as well, champ you are, all right, from Jeff Hamilton, he creates all these jackets uh, all over the world to every celebrity out there, you name it, everybody has one, so thank you very much, uh, Jeff Hamilton. Before I introduce the main event, I just want to touch on Golden Boy's schedule <clears throat> in the next three weeks, we have Amazing fights, starting with this one, Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. Let's not forget about Virgil Ortiz next weekend and uh, the return of, uh, of Ramirez uh, out, in, uh, out in Bakersfield. We're going to be um, having a full house. Sold 18,000 tickets already, which is incredible. Uh, then leading up to the uh, Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia. Uh, super card and all live on the zone, which is uh, which is incredible. And like Eddie said, yes, the zone is the home for boxing. That's for sure. I want to invite to the podium a man who needs no introduction in New York or anywhere in the boxing world. He is my partner and Hall of Famer, your very own Bernard Hopkins. Thank you. We have a fight, period. 
Enjoy it. Get your tickets if you don't have it. But we do have a fight. And, and contrary to what everybody's saying, the fight is selling, and it's hot. It's a hot ticket, so everything you're hearing out there with the uh, social media and posts and this and that, no, it's, we have what, like a 1,500 tickets left. The walk-up will make it a sellout, so you want to get your tickets fast. Now to the main event. This fight represents the ultimate rubber match between two highly skilled talent, uh, talents at their peak with power. In the amateur ranks, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia met six times. Each of them won three times. This fight on Saturday night is a true game seven with everything on the line. If Devin wins, he solidifies his hold on the super lightweight division. If Ryan wins, he is catapulted into the pound for pound rankings Whoever wins instantly becomes the face of boxing. This fight is truly a winner take all. It is my pleasure. He's been an unbelievable force in so many fighters' lives. And Ryan continues to make huge strides under his tutelage. It is my pleasure to introduce Derek James, the trainer, Derek James. Hello everyone, I'm happy to be here. Most importantly, y'all must remember, this fight is all about execution. From the promotional aspect, execution. Now it's time for Ryan to go out and execute. Thank Get you. Executed. Get executed. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> you know, Bill plays so many roles in Devin's life and career. Manager, trainer, father, and number one supporter. I have had a great experience working with him and welcome many collaborations in the future. Bill, please come up and say a few words. Bill, Bill Haney. Thank you. Thank you to uh, La for making all this possible. Um, we couldn't have been here without God's grace and God's mercy. Uh, this, this has been a heck of a promotion, um, but there's one standout promoter breakout promoter who's made this thing happen tonight, or I should say happen on Saturday, and that's Devin the Dream Haney. Um, when we started this journey, um, we, we set out with one thing on our minds, and that's to be, for Devin to be one of the best to ever put on a pair of gloves. I, I always say that these are stay busy moments and a quest to be on the Mount Rushmore of boxing. Well, that's what we intend to do. Uh, we have a great team. Uh, a great opponent and team in, in the Garcias. Uh, Derek James is a Hall of Fame uh, trainer, uh, um, trainer of the year. You know, I can't say enough about, about him, and I know the preparation that he'll have Ryan Garcia in. Um, Ryan Garcia has fooled the people. He's fooled the people into thinking that he's something other than a great fighter. Uh, we've been in the uh, ring with him six times, three and three in amateurs. And I've seen his, his work ethic uh, as a pro, but I've also seen his antics outside the ring. And uh, while he's continued to make you guys think that he's something, uh, that he might be crazy or delusional, um, in fashion, because with Cambosos, we gave him the art of war, because I'm sure that that's what he was reading. I have a book for Ryan Garcia today, Psychology for Dummies. Well. That's what Cambosos did, and you saw what happened to him. <laughs> well, so all this game that he thought that he was playing on the people, I don't know if he played, thought he was playing on you guys, but it didn't work with me and Devin. We stayed focused. There's no excuses. Come uh, Saturday night, put your kids to bed. It's 18 and over, because what I'm sending Devin to do to him shouldn't be on TV. They have violated everything about boxing, including throwing the book, disrespecting the sport, disrespecting religion, and for that, all gloves are off. If him and his team are really who they say they are, come to the center of the ring. Come to the center of the ring. Don't run. Don't run, because Devin is coming to do bodily harm to him. 
Now, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, uh, Eddie Hearn and DeZone, uh, for definitely believing in, in, in Devin from the very beginning. We had, we had a, we had a vision that we believed that, that kids and millennials and young people like my son would be watching and covering boxing on an app, on a, on a phone. They thought we was crazy when we when we made that decision to go with Eddie Hearn. He had Danny Jacobs and he had Tevin Farmer. He didn't have nobody else. Devin believed that we would be here today and this would be the way of watching boxing and covering boxing. And thank you to Devin and his decision that this is what we're here. Thank you to the zone. I, I, I went to talk to, to Oscar and one part of Devin being the promoter that he is, is being able to have relationships with Eddie Hearn, with Bob Arum, with, with Oscar De La Hoya and the like. I, I gave Oscar De La Hoya one thing and one thing only. I said, if you're the Hall of Fame fighter that I know you are, that you fought the fights in your prime, that you would make this fight happen between two fighters in their prime with no excuses. Thank you to Oscar for, for being a man of his word and staying on it. But come Saturday, this boy going to pay for all that shit that he done did. I promise you that. You know, this, this, is, this fight here is what boxing is all about. You know, now talking like a fighter, this is what boxing needs. Fights like this. Fighters at their peak. Fighters willing to try and become the very best. Making history at a young age. And when Ryan approached me and said, I want Devin Haney. Not any ordinary fighter says that today. Not any ordinary fighter wants to fight the very best. Ryan Garcia wants to prove that he's the best. He wants to fight the very best. And that's what makes you legendary. It doesn't happen anymore in boxing. So we have a special fight here on Saturday night. Thanks to both fighters, Ryan and Devin. We appreciate you all from all the boxing community all over the world because we will have a fight Saturday night. I've said this many times before, but Ryan Garcia is special. From his 15 national amateur championships to his explosion onto the boxing scene as a 20-year-old phenom, to his meteoric rise up the lightweight and now super lightweight division, Ryan has, Ryan has done it all. And now a world championship bout is within his grasp. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Victorville, California, and making his first appearance in the Big Apple with a lot of love from the fans, with a record of 24 and 1, 20 knockouts, Ryan King Rai Garcia. Thank you, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus is King, King of Kings, King of Kings. No. Okay. He is the King of Kings. Jesus is the one above all. Okay. How you guys doing? What do you guys want me to say? I've already said everything. I mean, what, what do you want me to do? I've already, I've, I've already done it all. I've already said it all. I've done it all. And now I'm just ready to kick ass. I'm ready to, I'm going there and just fuck this man up. You don't understand. I'm going to fuck him up. You don't know what I've been training like. You don't know the vision I have. You do now. Nah, no, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'll break this whole thing right now. That's how I'm fire. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. Ah, 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 ah. And I'm louder than that whole team. They got like five people there. Look how loud. Woo! We couldn't hear you, bitch. Here we go. We have a fight. We have a fight. You know, um, it is it is a pleasure to uh, introduce this next young man who, um, you know, as a world champion, he's done it all. He's uh, worked his way to the top as a world champion. He's um, started in Tijuana, right, like you said. Faced about 10 
Mexican tough fighters out there in Tijuana came back safe. He, uh, he's a fighter who is just 25 years old and is a two-time world champion in two divisions. There's not a lot that uh, Devin Haney hasn't accomplished in the sport of boxing. He's undefeated. He's a two-division world champion, like I said, and he fights anyone and everyone. On Saturday night, he will look to add to his already impressive resume. Ladies and gentlemen, the former undisputed lightweight champion and current WBC super lightweight champion of the world, Devin the Dream Haney. Alhamdulillah, I want to thank Allah for, for, for everything. Uh, without Allah, none of this is possible. Um, the time is, is, is very close. This has been a, a long time coming. And um, the talking is almost done. You know, the antics is almost done. This is not an easy fight, but this is a fight that I will make look easy. Through, through all the antics, through everything, I kept my blinders on and I stayed focused. I had my tunnel vision. And uh, on Saturday, it will show all his antics, all, all the stuff that he's been doing will betray, be, betray him, and it will show, inshallah. Reminder, tickets are available at Barclays Center. Fight starts 8 Eastern time on DAZN Worldwide. A couple questions for each of these guys before we let them get off the stage. Devin, your father just said... You're going to meet him right there in the middle of the ring and you want to slug it out with him. Why do you believe that's the best route for you? Because I don't think I don't think Ryan has a heart to. I think I think I don't think Ryan will will meet me in the middle. I don't think he's ready for that kind of fight. I was just looking, I was looking. Ryan, you were uh, you seem skeptical yeah. to say the least that Devin will will go to the middle of the ring and slug it out with you. Do you believe that's going to happen? No, he won't. Why do you think that? What do you think I'll do? I just, I just don't think you're gonna go in the middle of the ring. I just, I mean, that that would be stupid. Why? All right, come, come to the center. Come to the center. I meet you in the center. <laughs> what the fuck? Come to the center. All right, we're going to the center of the ring. We'll see what you do, bro. Nobody's worried about that. Go run, go fucking go to the center. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm gonna hunt you down. I'm just, I'm gonna fucking knock you out. Five hundred thousand dollars. Bad boy, you coming? Five hundred thousand. How much? Bet. Right, 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 right. Hey, so whoever come out of the way, pay five hundred thousand. hundred percent. I'm not gonna come out of the way. Whoever come out of the way, pay five hundred thousand. His dad said no. He just bet. It's a 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 bet. No, five. No, no, five. No, five. No, five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred. No, five hundred thousand per pound. Hey, hey, Ryan. 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 Hey, uh, hey, Ryan. Whatever you say, Dad. I hey, got you. Hey, Ryan, let's do 500000 per pound. Okay. Let's do a shake on it. Yeah. Hey, where's your mom at, baby? Where's, where's your mom? Oh, I'm going to go flirt with your mama. Ooh, she about to be fine as fuck. Uh, yeah, I want some of your mama. I want your mama now. Oh, get, I guess hey, your mama probably in my DMs. I'm, uh, yeah, fuck you, motherfucker. Don't talk about my mom before I fuck you up. Yeah, that fear coming in your mouth like a bitch, dog. I put my dick in your mouth, bitch. Ryan, what's up, Ryan? Uh, hey, pause. No Diddy. Pause. No Diddy. Ryan, a lot, a lot of people, Ryan, have have followed your social media over the last couple of months and wondered. Is he ready for this moment? What would you say to people that wonder if you're ready for this moment? Y'all see Saturday night. That's it. Simple. Devin, your prediction for the outcome of this fight? Something is wrong with this motherfucker. I'm going to tell you, no, nah, something wrong with him. This shit not normal. This shit is not normal. That's what happens when you face the Devin the Dream, Haney. Yeah, you're going to go one way or another. Yeah. Yeah, that's fast. Yeah, I am dip. That's fast. It's, it's all clicking in. So when Mike talk, never mind. Fuck, man, fuck you guys. <laughs> Ryan, we'll listen, but, but listen though, I want the world to give me my credit when it's all said and done. It's from for all my years of hard work and dedication and discipline. Don't make excuses for this guy. I don't want to hear nothing about nothing. 
my, all my hard work will pay off, and I want the world to give me my just due when I smash this motherfucker. Yes, sir. Ryan, we'll give you the last word. How do you think this fight ends? I'm gonna, I'm gonna break his neck. All right. We'll leave it at that. Eight o'clock Eastern time, live on the Zone Worldwide. Tickets available at Barclays Center. Oscar, Oscar, we'll give you the last word. That's my mom, by the way. Yeah, guys, few tickets left. We're not posing the fighters for pictures, but we will save that for tomorrow during the weigh-in. Thanks, guys. Thank you for coming out. New York, see you Saturday. Hey, Ryan, give us a photo. What happened to the photo, Ryan? That was a very, very interesting press conference. Let's remind you of the prelim fight card. Remember, this will be Corey Erdman alongside Akam Barak. Sergei Derevchenko takes on Vaughn Alexander. Darius Fulgham, a lot has spoken about this young man, takes on Christian Olivas. Jonathan Canas versus uh, Marcus Bells. That fight now at super lightweight. Amari Jones will take on Armel Mbumba Yasser. Uh, Kevin Newman the second will take on Eric Robles. And Shamil Canal will open the show against Pedro Borgard. Remember, that gets underway at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, so make sure you tune in for that one. And then the main card, Charles Conwell will take on Nathaniel Gallimore. Uh, John Scrappy Ramirez versus David Jimenez. A lot of people thinking that could be fight of the night. Bechtel Melakuziev will take on Pierre Dimbombe. Arnold Barboza Jr. Yeah, interesting eyes on Arnold. Unbeaten as a, a super lightweight will take on uh, Ireland Sean McComb. And Devon the Dream Haney will defend his WBC super lightweight title against the once beaten Ryan Garcia. That kind of went from like nothing to something very, very quickly. I still can't work out Ryan. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm almost, I've got my psychologist hat on trying to work him out there. What I will say is, again, we mentioned it. He's in shape. He's in shape. I think he's ready to go. And I still think there's an element of him trolling everyone and doing this as big PR to sell the fight, Ariel. Well, first of all, let's just give props to that man. He looks, look fantastic. At, look at that. That's fantastic. Like I said, he Could looks like a sniper. Did you pull off those glasses? He looks like it. Looks like he's like he's auditioning the for the Matrix. new Blade. Yeah, I, I Matrix, was thinking Wesley Snipes and Blade. I was thinking Something. that. Something. Yeah. There's all kinds of things going on, and his dad looked fantastic as well. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get a face-off. Needed it. I wanted it. And I needed it. I, I feel like the I dynamic understand. between all of them is great. I have to say that was incredibly entertaining, and also I like that it moved along. Everyone that went up there had a little thing to say. None shorter than Bernard Hopkins, like four words. Never said that in there. my life. But Eddie was great. Oscar was great. Devin, Ryan, I don't think he's trolling. I think this is Ryan Garcia. I think we have to accept that. And I think he's trying to get under Devin Haney's skin. It appears as though Devin is not bothered. It appears as though he is not as emotional as he was back on Tuesday. But it's just making me so excited. I wanted the cherry on top. I wanted the face off. The fa you got to have the face off. I, 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 I don't think, think we need why? Why? why not? Why don't you get the face off? Because just get a couple way... of big security guards there and do a face yeah. off. Yeah. I really can't, you can't trust Ryan Garcia right now. I mean, he, 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 he might swing. He might get physical. He might stand fight, between them, have someone there. I don't know. I, I like the fact there was no face off. I, I, this was, this was an interesting, like you said, interesting press conference. I, let's leave it at that. Let the fight be on Saturday. And, and yeah, a, a bit disappointed we didn't get to see it. But look, both fighters. What did you think of Ryan? I, first of all, when he came up earlier, yeah. when we saw him kind of make his way up on the stage by himself, I was like, oh, look, Ryan looks in great shape. The way he took to the podium, I was like, oh, I don't know. I just think this is now Ryan Garcia. Yeah. I think we're almost seeing a different version of Ryan. We're used to, you know, the nice smiling kid, as you said, it used to do the tennis ball thing on his head. I think that Ryan Garcia is done. Mm -hmm. And this is Ryan now 2.0. This is, I think this is Ryan Garcia, and I think this guy is here to stay. And I don't think it affects the way he fights. I think that's what's key here. I think Ryan going in the ring will still fight like Ryan. I think once that bell goes, we're going to see a great Ryan Garcia. I just think we all have our concerns as we lead up to the fight. But I just think this is him now. The one with the harshest words, I thought, was Bill Haney, right? Saying that, like, you're going to pay for everything that you said. You talked about family. You talked about religion. You talked about all these things. I am sending my fighter, my son, in there. And I love the line, put your kids to bed like and sit back and watch what's going to happen. It's very clear that this is personal for the Haney's. But, again, even after today, 
I think I agree with you. He is not going to fight emotionally out there. It seems like he is a man on a mission, mm -hmm. and he wants to make Ryan pay for everything that he has done and said. And all the sort of drama and headaches leading up to today, leading up to this fight, I think that Haney's almost annoyed. I, I think we were kind of debating, like, what is Haney right now? I think he's not concerned for Ryan. I don't think he cares about Ryan. I think he's annoyed that he has to be around him so much, and I think he wants to make him pay for that. Come oh, Saturday. How about that book that Bill Haney? Uh, yeah. Ryan I want it. Where is it? I mean, where? Oh, it's still there. Look, there it is. I might go and get Put it. Put that in the Canistota, the Hall it. of Fame. I might, nice I'm, little I might go and get it. Look, we, we didn't see the face off. We are going to see it tomorrow though, at the way, and you can see Devin Haney there doing his bit with the media. He, he's got very comfortable, and he likes that. But make sure you join us for the weigh-ins. We are getting closer now. Saturday is fight night. We had the media day on Tuesday. Obviously, we've had this today. It pushes on to the weigh-ins, and then we get fight night. So tune in, tune in for the weigh-ins at 2 p.m. I believe it is 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, make sure you tune in. We'll all be there. Myself, Ariel, Sergio, and Chris as well, and a couple of special guests as well. We'll see you then. We had a great fight for the Amazon, no doubt. We need to fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's fight. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to a night. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia, lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one Alice. Live on the zone worldwide April 20th. You want the real fight? You can find me.